Hi, my name is Jonas Zepulera, and welcome to the segment of Through the Eyes of Youth, presented and produced by Veronica Robles Cultural Center. Our guest for today is Richard. Welcome. Thank you for having me. All right. Well, Richard, we are honored for you to have um, for you to be here within the segment of Through the Eyes of Youth. Um, we are going to ask you a couple questions. So we're going to start off with, um, would you be kind enough to share the audience a little bit about your family? Sure. Uh, I grew up in East Boston, and uh, my grandparents immigrated here from Italy, and my mother was a single parent and raised my brother and I in East Boston. Um, I lived in East Boston most uh, for about 25 years, uh, and then I moved to the North Shore, so I presently live in uh, Wenham, Massachusetts now. Um, how do you integrate your cultural traditions into your business or lifestyle? Well, I think that the most important thing uh, was uh, the benefit that I had uh, by growing up with my grandparents who immigrated here from Naples, Italy. Uh, I think that that left a lasting impression in my habits, uh, on, the, on my work habits especially, and appreciation for things that you work for. I watched my grandfather, who was a tailor, go to Boston every day and work uh, long hours in the factory. Uh, my grandmother uh, did some housekeeping, and my mother worked in a department store. And it was very important that everybody in the, ha in the family understood that to be successful uh, and to be able to buy a house to provide for your family, that the hard work ethic, ethics that the immigrants brought here from whatever country they came from, uh, wanted to have an opportunity. And I, I respected what I learned from my grandfather, even though they couldn't speak English very well. I learned that you get up in the morning and you have responsibilities, you have to work for something that you want and then you appreciate it. And I think that that lasted all through my life, uh, the benefit of seeing that and being accustomed to that as, as uh, growing up as a young man. Because mm -hmm. uh, I started working jobs uh, as young as seven years old, uh, out shoveling snow for money, uh, cleaning yards doing it whatever I could and I took great pride in earning a few dollars which I would bring home and give to my mother and felt it felt very rewarding and fulfilling to be able to understand uh, how you translate hard work into doing something that's constructive and helping the family. Um, what do you think about arts and culture? Uh, I think arts and cultures are very important especially with your ethnic background that you respect and understand what benefits you get from understanding what your country, your native country produces. And being Italian, uh, I always made it a point to find as much out about the history of Italy and the culture of the music and the artistic works and made it a point to travel to Italy to see firsthand what it was like uh, for my grandparents to see the country that they came from. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that knowing the artistic works and the creativity that comes from your ethnic background is, is extremely important to carry on to the future uh, children of your family. Mm -hmm. um, how did you learn to do the things that you do right now? That's a great question. Uh, I really had nobody to teach me anything or any social guidance when I was young. Uh, we went to a, a local school in East Boston. It was a Catholic school. Uh, I graduated high school, uh, not ever going anywhere other than in East Boston. Um, I was more or less a self-taught individual uh, during the uh, graduation, right after graduation at that time, the Vietnam War was going on and, and young men, if you didn't go to college, had to fulfill a military obligation one way or the other through the Army Reserves or enlisting or getting drafted. I had to fulfill my uh, military obligation through the Army Reserves. I came back from active duty, uh, but before I went in I got a job in a mail room of a stockbroker firm in Boston. I was like just turned 17 years old. Went to basic training, came back, resumed my, my job in the mail room. Uh, I was making $42 a week I think back then and I learned about the stock market, about stock brokers, about corporations and public companies and then I became a clerk and I kind of worked my way up until I was old enough to lobby 
the CEO of the company to become a stockbroker, and naturally they didn't want me to be a broker. Many, I had many negative things against me. Uh, I grew up in East Boston. I didn't know anybody with any money. Um, I never sold anything in my life, but I was pretty persistent, and they gave me the opportunity, and that's how I first started to get involved with finance by being a stockbroker in the city uh, of, uh, you know, the office was in Boston. And I was self-taught, nobody, I, I, I learned by osmosis because I was in that environment and I watched everybody. So I basically learned uh, the hard way, made a lot of mistakes, yeah. but uh, hopefully you're much wiser once you make mistakes. I, 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 when I talk to young people, I always tell them that failure is your passport to success. Because if anybody's successful, they failed along the way. And if they tell you they haven't, then they really didn't make it there on their own, okay? Because it's only a natural progression. So uh, I, I had to learn by bad experiences and the hard way, so self-taught. Mm -hmm. All right, um, would you be kind enough to tell us about your mentors in life and business? Uh, well, I think my grandfather was an important mentor to me because of, of the example he set. Uh, again, he was a tailor, spoke very little English, but uh, w the way he provided for his family and the sacrifices he made, I'll, I, I always remember that. Uh, but other than that, uh, I just assimilated myself into every environment to benefit from a learning experience. Whether it was a meaning, a very menial job, working in a uh, drugstore, you benefited from that experience. You learned to communicate to a customer. You learned how to make change. You learned how to be polite in the exchange. You learned how to provide customer service. So I would think that uh, I was my own mentor in the respect that uh, all these experiences that I had that people might think are frivolous and insignificant, I translated those into an experience that became an asset to me personally and presenting myself uh, in, in the business world. All right. Well, do you want anything to be asked about yourself? I collect uh, antique and classic automobiles, which oh. occupies a lot of my time when I'm not working at the bank. So that keeps me busy. And I had a radio show uh, on FM 104.9 which was a, a radio show dedicated to uh, antique and classic automobiles. And I also used it to promote opportunities for young people that might not want it to go to college so that they could understand that there's very good uh, money to be made by learning a trade, whether it be auto body or mechanic uh, for automobiles and that technology. So I used to bring on people that uh, would teach that arrive opportunities for young people to say uh, they really didn't want to go to college, they'd rather do something else, to give them an exposure to understand that uh, there is life in other areas of technical fields that are very, hand you know, pay pretty handsomely too. I, uh, I'm the chairman and president and CEO of East Boston Savings Bank. I'm very proud of that organization. Uh -huh. Uh, the bank has grown tremendously, and we are committed to the communities we serve. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story my with pleasure, us. My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. No problem. Um, thank you all for watching. This has been um, Through the Eyes of Youth, presented and produced by Veronica Robles Cultural Center. Thank you for watching again, and we'll see you next time.